talked about the development and fate of endodermal pouches. Now, in those endodermal pouches, we have discussed the third and fourth pouch derivatives, how they are forming the parathyroids along with the C cells of the thyroid gland. Now, the question arises, how the thyroid gland develops? So today we are going to talk about the development of thyroid gland. Uh, you are already familiar with this diagram. This is the coronal section of the pharynx where you can appreciate the pharyngeal arches with the ectodermal clefts. endodermal pouches. So this is first arch, second, third, fourth and sixth arches. Correspondingly, there is first, second, third, fourth and sixth arch over here also. Now, in relation to the first arch, you can appreciate two lingual swellings shown in yellow. These are the lingual swellings and behind them there is a red colored area that is known as tuberculum infarct. All the three structures are in relation to the first perineal arch. Now there is another structure which forms the thyroid gland and the two lobes of the thyroid gland along with the isthmus which is the connecting link between 
between the two lobes of the thyroid gland is formed because of this bifid structure. This is the normal pattern of growth. Now, if something deviates from the normal, it becomes anomalous. So these are the anomalies I'm going to talk about. Anomalies related to the development of thyroid gland. First and foremost anomaly is the anomaly of shape. Means the shape of the thyroid gland is altered because of the normal deviation or sorry, the deviation from the normal and when there is deviation from the normal, anomalies of shape, the first one is the presence of pyramidal loop. And see here, this is a diagram showing the pyramidal loop. This is the pyramidal loop and it is connected to the hyoid bone. You can see here, the hyoid bone is here. And it is connected to the hyoid bone through the regulator glandular thyroid. Okay, so the two lobes are connected with each other to the isthmus and the pyramidal lobe is often present which is considered to be a normal appearance sometimes because of its uh, presence and this pyramidal lobe may either arise from the isthmus, it may arise from either of the lobes, see, and it represents the thyroid tissue only from either of the uh, above. Right? And then there might be thyroid tissue present in the debater glandular thyroid. So these are some of the anomalies related to the shape. Then there might be another anomaly in which case the isthmus may be completely absent. So the two lobes are present as different entities. They are not joined together by the isthmus. Either of the lobe may be absent partially or completely along with the absence of isthmus. This is how the anomalies of shape are there. Then we come to the anomalies of position. The position is when the thyroglossal duct is going through its passage reaching the trachea, in front of the trachea where the thyroid gland is normally present. In that passage of the thyroglossal duct, it may get arrested. That is the thyroid tissue may get arrested anywhere during its passage. And then it is classified as anomalies of position. First is the lingual thyroid. It is present under the mucosa of the tongue. Then it is lingual thyroid. This is one. It may be intralingual. That is in the substance of the thyroid, in the substance of the tongue, thyroid tissue is present. Then it is known as intralingual. Lingual is tongue. So it is intralingual thyroid. Then it becomes then, this is the hyoid bone. It may be present above the hyoid, it may be present below the hyoid bone, and then it is known as supra hyoid thyroid and intra hyoid thyroid. As you can see here, supra hyoid thyroid and intra hyoid thyroid. Right? Then, this thyroid tissue may be present in the thoracic region. It is then known as intra thoracic. Otherwise, the normal course is taken and it comes to lie in front of the trachea. The level is C5 to C, um, C5, C6, C7 and T1. And this is how the normal position of thyroid is. This is preboid cartilage. Thyroid over here. And these are some of the anomalies related to the position of thyroid tissue. Then there might be ectopic thyroid tissue. Ectopic thyroid tissue is present other than its normal passage. Means these were the anomalies of position because of the passage of thyroglossal duct. But other than the thyroglossal duct, if the tissue is present anywhere, it is known as ectopic thyroid tissue. Right? Then there might be some remnants of the thyroglossal duct and these remnants may present in the form of cysts or the cyst 
might have an opening to the outside that is known as fistula. So it is thyroglossal fistula. Then the thyroglossal cyst might be there. And at certain incidences, you can find the carcinoma of thyroid gland also. So that is how the thyroid gland presents itself as midline swellings in the form of thyroglossal cysts. These cysts might have an opening to the outside, to the exterior, then it is known as thyroglossal fistula. A fistula is basically an opening connecting the two anatomical spaces. Right? And sinus is present when there is opening to the outside only. So it is not, uh, there is slight difference between sinus and fistula. So fistula is the communication between the two anatomical spaces and sinus is an opening to the outside. Right? So this is how you can find the development of the thyroid gland along with the anomalies which are anomalies of shape, anomalies of position, ectopic thyroid tissue and the remnants of the thyroglossal duct. That is all about the development of thyroid gland. Thank you.